Hi, Al Smith here. Welcome to the third course in the defense series. Today, we're going to be looking at uh, what card to lead against no trump contracts. And we're going to look at uh, three types of leads. Uh, you'll see how they fit into the overall picture in a second, but we're going to look at, look at partner directed leads, partner requested leads, and power leads. Okay, let's go ahead and get started. Okay. Today, we're going to be talking about the third most critical decision you're going to make in terms of the opening lead. The first one was to determine what type of lead to make, an active, a passive, a desperate type of lead. The second was to determine what suit to lead. Today, we're going to start down the journey to figure out what card to lead. Okay. Let's look at the different classes of leads that we have against no trump. The, the first one is going to be a partner directed or partner suggested. Okay, and the directed is as a response to a lead directing double or Leitner double or some other type of artifact in the bidding system that says, hey partner, I want you to lead this suit. Suggested is a suit that your partner bid. Okay, the second class of leads are what we're going to call attacking. Remember, our goal in terms of defense against no Trump is to establish our long suit that we have between ourselves and our partner to see uh, to take tricks. And it's a race between the declare and between uh, us that are playing defense. Now, in this category, we have power leads. And this is where you've got a really strong suit. And you are, uh, in essence, attacking that. You hope your partner has something to complement it. Okay, and we fall into really two categories here. We have those that are based on sequences, like ace, king, queen. Or when we have five plus cards in the suit and we have uh a, a, a partial sequence like the, 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 the ace king, the king queen, or even just the ace, but we have enough cards in that suit that we don't want to leave fourth because it's not to our advantage. The second subcategory here is development lead. This is where you try to think it's find a suit that you and your partner can mutually develop. The, the, the rule of level or leading forth from your longest and strongest is one such type of lead. Okay, and uh, that used to be uh, very, very common and a common rule, but that only applies now about 30% of the time. Okay, we also, uh, in this category, is when we lead from a three card suit. And the third type in here is the short major suit lead. And we'll, we'll discuss uh, uh, in the, the next uh, lesson uh, what, how to identify when we're going to do this based upon the sequence of bids. The third type is the passive lead. Here is the situation where we don't want to make a lead that's going to finesse ourselves or our partner because we don't have a strong suit or don't have a good idea what that strong suit is. One example of when we're going to do a passive lead is against six no trump because we don't want to help the declarer set up a trick. That's probably all the declarer needs to make the contract. Another is that the opponents are in three no trump. They have somewhere between 25 and 30 points and you're sitting there with 10 to 15 points in your hand. It's obvious that your partner doesn't have anything if you don't have a strong suit that you can make power lead from, you're going to want to make a passive lead because any other lead is going to finesse yourself. You're going to be leading away from strength and allowing the declarer to take a cheap trick, either in the, in the dummy or in the declarer's hand. Okay. And one of, uh, one of the, there are two ways of really doing this in this by leading an uh, unbid suit. Uh, with nothing in it, or by leading through the dummy bid suit, okay, leading through strength that way, the way you minimize the chances of finessing your partner. And finally, we've got the, the our old standby, the desperate lead. We've got a really crappy hand. Now, I want to point out again 
the best defenders are the ones that play crappy hands well. And you go, how do you play a crappy hand well? Well, you clearly communicate to your partner that you've got a crappy hand and where you have length. That way your partner can figure out the best defense possible and maximize your results. Think about that. If your partner knows you've got a crappy hand or where you've got length and a crappy hand, they can figure out what the declarer has. So in essence, look at yourself as the alter ego of the of your partner or the other half of his brain, and you're just trying to make sure that the other half of his brain, the real part, understands what you have. All right. Now, the part of the, the, the things that we're going to discuss today, I've highlighted up here in the uh, uh, top. We're going to talk about partner uh, directed and suggested and attacking power leads with sequence leads. So let's go ahead and get started. Before we do, I want to remind you that uh, the card that is led can have different meanings, and it's going to be based upon the situation. Okay, so you want to listen and 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 and, and look very carefully to to make sure you're collecting all the information. You've got two ears. You know, remember what the auction is. Uh, you know, that's very important in terms of uh, in, uh, of making the correct decision of collecting that information and analyzing it. You know, for example, the opponents bid one no trump and then three no trump. They ignored the majors. Like we discussed last week, this almost automatically calls for a major suit lead. Okay, so remember that. Process that information. Go through those first two decision processes. You've got two eyes. Okay, once that opening lead is faced, Look at the dummy, both the person that made the opening lead and the partner of the person that made the opening lead. It's critical that you use that information. Okay, one of the most famous authors in, in Bridge, especially in defense, his, 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 his mantra was, duh, look at the dummy, stupid. Okay, I can't believe how many people never look at the dummy when they're playing defense. Okay, you know, wealth of information sitting there staring you in the face. Use it. Okay. Try to figure out how your cards fit together with those of the dummy. Okay, now if your partner is making the opening lead and they make that opening lead, you can now figure out for almost a hundred percent of the time what cards the declarer has, what cards your partner has, and and it's, it's kind of like opening a book and being able to read the information from the page. Okay. Let's say that your, your, your partner leads the king and you have the queen. Well, you know they didn't lead from the top of the sequence. And you go, why did they lead the king? So there's different. I'm not going to try to answer that question right now. But there is a reason. And that king has special significance and tells you what the, your partner has in most cases, and you can verify that that deduction based upon looking at your hand in the dummy. Okay, sometimes it won't be clear immediately what the message is that your partner is trying to tell you with the opening lead. Okay, so what's really, really important, and I'm not very good at this, I get lazy, is to remember what card your partner leads on trick one and then relate that to the second card your partner plays in that suit the second time that that suit is played. The same is true of the partner of the opening leader. So that, that you can actually you know, piece together the information that's being communicated to you because, you know, it's like the an analogy I use, you know, I'm going to the store to buy a, 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 a bottle of wine, okay? You don't know what you're going to the store for until you get that second part of the sentence. The second card played is the second part of the sentence. Make sure you remember what card your partner played. Develop that habit. It's really critical to your defense. All right. Now we have the first class of leads. That's partner directed or requested. Okay, and just uh, to clarify, directed is uh, as a result of a lead directing double, a lightner double, or 
some other artifact in the bidding system says, hey, partner, leave this suit. Now, that's directed. It's kind of a command. All right. So think of it as much stronger than a request. And a request is when your partner bids the suit. All right. Now, I'll put up here in red. Okay. Trust your partner. Okay. If they're telling you to lead a suit, lead it. However, unless you have something better. Okay. The only absolute rule in bridge is there are no absolute rules. Okay, so if you have something better, this happens quite a bit. You know, I will make a, a lead directing double. And for whatever reason, my partner says, nah, I'm going to lead a different suit. Trust your partner. They're almost always right because once you get into the groove of playing the right type of defense, your partner is consciously making the decision saying, yeah, I know you told me to lead spades, but I've got really good heart. And I think we can take more tricks and hearts that you're going to be able to take in spades. So trust your partner unless you have something better. Okay. Now, if your partner has made a lead directing double or a bit of suit and so forth, you're going to have the, what you leave to your partner in their for the development of their suit is going to be based upon how many cards you have. Okay, and we're going to talk about four plus cards, three and two. And remember, the goal here is to win the race, to develop the suit. So the card that you lead, the logic behind that is what card is going to have the greatest probability of developing the suit for your partner? Not for you, for your partner, as they've said. Lead this suit, you've got to come to the conclusion that you've got something good in that suit, so try to help your partner out. Okay, when well, you've got four plus cards in a suit, you know, uh, you can have different conditions. Okay, the first one we're going to discuss here very briefly is where you've got two touching honors. Okay, what you're going to want to do is lead the highest honor. In this case, with uh, the, the notation I'm using, it's uh, the, the card you would lead in this case is bold and red and underlined. So we're going to lead the king. And you say, well, why don't we lead the queen? Well, if you lead the queen, it denies having the king. And your partner is going to conclude my partner doesn't have the king. However, if you lead the queen, king, okay, your partner says, aha, I can see the king and my partner may still have the queen. All right. So remember, in this case, the queen denies having the king, but the king does not deny having the queen. So you leave your partner open to the possibility that you have the next lower card. OK, with just one honor, and we're going to define an honor in this case as the ace, king or queen. I don't include the jack. Why do I include the jack? Because uh, jacks don't take a lot of tricks. And when you're playing in a, in a lot of contracts, the jacks don't help a whole bunch in establishing the suits. They are helpful, but they don't take tricks. Okay, so with four, we're going to lead our fourth highest. Okay, and when we lead a low card, you're going to see this is consistent throughout the opening lead discussions is that a low card promises a, high, a higher honor, the ace, king, or queen. So we lead to three. Now the trick is going to be how do we later on tell our partner how many we have. Okay, we're not going to discuss that today, but we've got to take step one by knowing which card to lead. With no honor, what we're going to do is we're going to lead the highest card that we have. So. You know, with the jack, 10, 3, 2, we're going to lead the jack. With 7, 4, 3, 2, we're going to lead the 7. What's that tell our partner? It says, hey, partner, this is the highest card that I have in that suit. So kind of divide that up. If they lead an honor, you know they've got a touching honor. It could be a singleton or a doubleton, but you know, most of the time it's going to be touching honors. If they lead a cloak card, they're saying, hey, I've got the ace king or queen. And if they lead a middle card, and they jack down through probably around the six, they're saying, hey, I don't have an honor. That's a lot of information that, that your 
opening leader can tell his partner about the suit that the partner is asking to be led. Think about that. Just a tremendous amount of information. How many times have you sat there? Your partner makes an opening lead. And you go, I wonder what in the hell he has this time. Okay. I've been there many times and I've done it for my partner many times. Okay. So it's really critical. Okay. One final note here with respect to four. If your highest is a nine and you don't have honor, avoid leading the nine or ten. Okay, and the reason is that there's something called coded nines and tens that I'm going to discuss later in this lesson. Okay, you don't want to confuse your partner. Okay, and by leading the nine, it will confuse your partner. You'll see later why. So, you know, the eight is close enough to the nine. So, go ahead, lead the eight here, not the nine. If you had the ten eight, don't lead the ten, lead the eight. Okay, it's high enough that your partner is going to go, hey, it doesn't have the ace, king, or queen. All right, let's look at the situation with three cards. It's going to be pretty much the same. Okay, if, you know, the only difference is you're leading from three versus four. Okay, if you've got two touching honors, play the touching honor. Okay, now, actually, these, uh, in, in, in this case here, you know, because you've got four, there's things you're going to do up here that you're not going to do with three because there's danger there, Will Robinson. Okay, when you only have three cards, if you and it relates to when you have two non-touching honors. Okay, it can also relate to when you have touching honors. You know, let's just discuss real briefly what blocking means. Okay, if you led the four, and where you've got the situation where you've got the queen jack four, okay, your partner, let's say, has the the ace. Uh, king, they take the ace, they play the king, they lead back another one because they don't have the queen. You get stuck in your hand and you can't lead the suit back to them. And they may be sitting there with another one, two, three, four good tricks and never can get the opportunity because you took the third trick. That's called blocking your partner. So one of the concepts that's really, really important in defense is unblocking. Okay, so let's take a look at the second one here. We've got the ace, queen, and three. Okay, if we led the three and our partner has the king, we're going to take the next two tricks. It doesn't matter whether we've got four, five, or six cards left in that suit. If there's no outside entry, those tricks are dead. Okay, so... Well, when, in this case, we've got the ace, queen, three. We're going to leave the ace first. We're going to take the trick. Now, the, guess, the second thing to note is we're going to leave the queen second. Okay, and we're leaving that queen second because we're going to try to trap or surround and hope for the king to be in the dummy's hand so that we can drive it out or our partner may have it and choose to play low knowing that we have another card the three to lead to, to him that way we do not block the suit the same is true when we have the king jack three now that three could be any card okay so in the in the queen ten you can see the common characteristic here is two honors with a separation between the the, the, the two honors okay in this case, you know, when we don't have the ace, we're going to lead the, the, the lower non-touching honor first. We're in the first case, we're going to lead the jack. Why? Because we want to create a mystery. We want the declare not to know where the king is. So it's going to cause them uh, consternation in determining whether what they should play from each hand. Okay, so that's really kind of an important concept. You know, psychologically, we're trying to hide information from the declarer. Okay, so that makes their decision process more difficult. Now, obviously, it's going to make our partner's decision process easier because we're going to lead the jack first. When we get in the lead again, we're going to lead the, the king. Okay, our partner then knows because we led in that particular it, it led the cards in that particular sequence, the jack, then the king, that we have a third one. Okay. All right. So with just one honor, like with four, we're going to leave the lowest. 
with no honor, we're going to leave the highest. Okay, with two cards. Now let's come back up here. How did we know when we led the jack and then the king that we have another one? Well, if we only have two, we're leading the king first. Okay, I'm going to lead the highest card with two. So we've got the ace, and what that does is it, it creates a situation where we're unblocking immediately. The fewer cards you have in the suit, the more important it is to unblock. Now we've got a special type of unblock where we have the, the, the king queen. We could have the ace king too. We're going to lead the lower honor first, then the higher honor. Okay, and they're going to be touching, and our partner's going to make notice of that. And then they're going to know, aha, my partner only has two cards in that suit. So, you know, the pieces of information, I'm going to the store to buy a bottle of wine, are all here. All you have to do is keep your eyes open and interpret the information. All right, let's move on. Now, there's a lot of information on this page, okay? And the majority of the time, you're going to have two or three cards in suits. It's going to be, make things a little bit easier. But go back and review this and make sure you understand why certain cards are being led. You know, again, you know, and we'll look here with four. You're saying, hey, I've got two touching honors. Or I don't have an honor by leading in the middle or by leading middle low. It says, I've got the ace, king, or queen. That makes things pretty simple. You're saying, hey, here it is. I got one or I got none. All right. Now, let's talk about sequences a minute. There are six different types of sequences we're going to talk about today. And each one has its own characteristics. Okay, there's what we call the ultimate sequence. And don't worry about what they are yet because I'm going to define them later. And then there's the near ultimate sequence. And there's the perfect sequence, and the near perfect sequence, and the broken sequence, and the code at nine and ten broken sequence. You go, oh my God, we got a lot of different sequences. Yeah, then we do. Okay, but what this does is allow you to visualize and define each one of these in a manner that is where you can, if it's understood, you can clearly communicate it to your partner. Okay. That's the secret, being able to clearly communicate it to your partner. Now remember, the goal is to set up a suit as a source of tricks. Okay. The first one we're going to talk about is the ultimate sequence. Okay. And why is it the ultimate sequence? Is because you've got the ace, king, queen. And you could also have the jack and also have the ten. And the nine and the eight. Okay. So the key is, though, having the ace, king, queen. Now, when... Uh, and the, my coding convention here is where you see this parentheses and you see a card in there. It says, well, you could have this card also. All right. So <laughs> whenever you have an ultimate sequence, you know, the ace, king, queen, plus other stuff in that sequence, continuing the sequence, you're always going to lead the queen. You know, why the queen? Okay. Uh, well, you, you know, because you've got the ace, king, queen, you've got three or more tricks in that suit. Okay, you're going to lead the queen. Now, okay, uh, because you don't want to lead the, the, the jack because the, in, in, in the lead sequence, the jack has a special meaning. It says, I don't have any higher honor. So the jack denies. So, got to give each card in this you know, the ace, the king, the queen, the jack, all of them have special meaning when they're led. So when you let the queen, the queen, you know, it actually says it could be the top of a sequence. It could be several things, but there's also several things that it can't be. Okay, so when you lead the queen and the trick goes around and the trick wins, okay, you lead the queen and the trick wins, your partner is then going to know that you also have the ace king. You go, well, why not? Why, why is that? Well, you remember, you're no trump. If you're leading the queen, your partner's saying, I've got something in this suit. Okay. If the declare is not taking the trick, almost always the 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 it tells you your partner has the ace king now 
If your partner is leading from the ultimate sequence, the second card they're going to play is going to be used to tell you or tell your partner what suit do you want to lift. Okay, we're going to use this as a suit directional. Okay, if once the queen wins the trick, if the king is then led, it says, hey, I want a lower rank suit returned to me. If you win the trick, partner, it says, I've got something in that lower rank. Okay, and it says, if they lead the ace, I want a higher rank. So let's look at that. You've got two cards that you can lead the king or the ace. The king says, give me a lower rank suit back. The ace says, give me a higher rank suit back. Okay, now, because this is the opening lead, you're leading a suit, there's three suits left. So it's going to be clear, pretty clear, you know, one that's lower, you know, like let's say that you led the diamond, you're lower, so that, pointing to the clubs, pointing to the clubs, or you lead the ace, it says point to the higher, and you go, well, the higher could be uh, spades or hearts. So how do you decide? Well, duh. You look at your hand and you look at the dummy and it's pretty easy to figure out what that opening leader is trying to say as to which suit they're going to want. You know, it's, we'll look at some examples and it becomes really easy. Okay, let's take a look here. Right there's, here's uh, your hand down here. And the dummy's hand, and they're in no trump. One, two, five, six, really doesn't matter. Okay, and you've got this nice ultimate sequence in hearts. You've got the, the diamonds, the ace, king, queen. So you say, ah, I'm going to lead the queen. Okay, you lead the queen. Okay, and it wins the trick. Now, your partner over here, who I've, I've left nameless, uh, sees that and says, aha, my partner has the ace and king because he looks in his hand and says, I don't have the ace and king. He looks at the dummy and says, ah, the king, dummy doesn't have the ace and king. So my partner either has the ace and king or the declarer is crazy and has the ace and king and decided not to take the trick. Okay, now that's possible. You know, I've, I've had crazy, I've played against crazy declares and some of them are crazy like a fox. Okay, so now, the key, though, is that once the queen wins, you're going to win. You're going to play one of these two tricks. And as soon as you play the king or you play the ace, your partner knows with absolute certainty that you started with the ace, king, queen. Could have more, but you had at a minimum the ace, king, queen. So let's look at this hand. What suit do you want led back to you? Duh. You want clubs. Look at that. You've got the king. The, the, there's nothing bigger behind you. And you get your partner to lead a club through that nasty declare. Okay. If your partner doesn't have the ace, you're going to win a trick. Now, by telling your partner that you want a club, if they've got the ace, they can take that ace and lead the club back to you and get two tricks. Okay. Clear, clearly communicates what suit that you want led. Now, let's say hypothetically you played the ace. You had the king of spades over here, too. Okay. The partner is going to say, well, it's a higher suit. They look at the dummy and say, well, if I lead a heart, gee whiz, I'm leading into the ace, queen, ten, eight. That really would be a stupid lead. Obviously, my partner doesn't want that suit. Ergo, he's asking me for a spade. So use your two eyes. This will help tremendously by looking at the dummy so you can make uh, the obvious decision. All right. All right. Now, that's, that's the ultimate uh, sequence. Now we're going to look at the near ultimate sequence. And, I, okay, and this also includes within it the unblocked request. There's actually two special sequences in this discussion. Okay, and the first one is when you've got the ace king and you're missing that queen in here and you've got the jack. So it's pretty close to having the ace king queen, right? Okay, but you don't have the ace king queen. Okay, so what do you want to do? Okay, well, the question is, where is that stupid queen? Now, your partner, when you think, okay, we're going to lead the king. Okay, but the, in, when you lead the king, it may be indicating several different things. It can be from a top of a perfect sequence, and we'll talk about those in a minute. We got the king, queen, jack, or from a partial sequence, or this one that we're talking about, the unblocked request. 
okay? So we lead the king, okay? If you have the queen, if your partner has the queen in his hand or looks and sees it in dummy, he knows that it can't be a sequence because it requires the queen. And he knows it can't be a partial sequence because he sees the queen. So he can whittle it down very quickly to say, aha, my partner has the ace, king, jack. All right. So, you know, that's, that makes things much, much easier if you can figure out very quickly what it is. All right. Now, let's say hypothetically, I lead the king. Okay. And you see that you have the queen in your hand. Okay. You're going to be able to immediately determine that I'm leading that as from the sequence of ace, king, jack. And I'm asking you to unblock. And what's that mean? Well, when I lead the king, you're going to play the queen on that first trick because I'm saying, oh, where are, where art thou, Mr. Queen or Miss Queen? Okay. And I want to know where it's at so that I can determine whether I can safely continue leading the suit. So by playing that queen, I go, whoa, my ace is good. My jack is good. My 10 is good. Hey, I'm going to keep leading this sucker and hope the nine falls so that my eight is going to be good. See how that works? I lead the king. He's, go, ah, he's asking me to drop my king, queen. Now, historically, if you go back, the only time that you're requesting an unblock before, you know, go back 10 years, was when the ace is lit. That is, that is an old style that is no longer valid. Okay, and well, you'll see that as I get farther into the, the, the lessons. Okay, that the leading the ace no longer asks you to unblock. So if you are used to that particular style, that's something you learn going to have to unlearn it. All right. So you can see how nicely that works. When you can recognize that that particular sequence, you drop the queen and it works. Okay. The second sequence is similar to the first where you have the king, queen, blank, 10. Okay. In this sequence, if you lead the queen, it could be several things. But if you've got the queen or you see the, uh, if you've got the jack or you see the jack and the dummy, you're going to know that the sequence is the king, queen, blank, 10. Okay, and the same is true. You're going to want to unblock. Okay, if you have the 10. Okay, it tells you in a very distinct and definitive manner exactly what your partner has in their hand. So we've talked about the ultimate sequence, the near ultimate sequence. Now we're talking about perfect sequences. Okay, perfect sequences are the king, queen, jack or the queen, jack, 10, nine, or jack, 10, nine. Now, perfect sequences can be any length in terms of the number of cards you could have. Now, the minimum is three. You need three cards in sequence for it to be a perfect sequence, but it could be four, it could be five. Now, you're gonna see here that I've got two cards identified, the highest in red and it's underlined. That's the card you leave first. The second time you play the suit, okay, and you know, I'm assuming you're, you're, you're leading again, okay, you're going to play the card that's in bold, black and underlined. By playing the first card that's in red, you're indicating the top of your sequence, and the second card defines the bottom of your sequence. So if we look at this second example here, it says, hey, partner, I'm leading the queen. Okay, and when you see that it gets taken, you've got the ace or the king somewhere else and so forth. You know it's not one of the all near ultimate sequence. You know it's not the ultimate sequence. You know it's the part it's 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 either a perfect sequence or a near perfect sequence, which we'll talk about in a minute too. Okay, so you know that it's a, that that's the top of the sequence. When they play the nine, it then promises they have the jack and ten also. So the top of the sequence, bottom of the sequence. Okay, again, yeah, so I'm going to the store to buy a bottle of wine. Okay, so you're communicating information with both of those cards. Okay, when you, we're going to assume that you're leading the, the, from the top of the sequence where you've got the king, the jack. Okay, now, one other thing. You know, this will come up and you'll go, oh, gee, which one should I lead? In one case, you'll have 
uh, you'll have two different suits. In one, you'll have the King, Queen, Jack. In the other one, you'll have the Queen, Jack, 10. Which is the better sequence to leap from? The stronger one. Okay, stating the obvious, but sometimes it's good to state the obvious. Okay, the higher the cards in the sequence, the better the sequence. Okay, let's assume you're leading, you've got the King, Queen, Jack, and maybe a couple more. Who knows? Okay, doesn't matter, but you only got three. So, you know, it's still a perfect sequence. Okay, you're going to, if you and you lead that king, you're hoping your partner has the ace. Wouldn't that be sweet? Okay, if your partner's got the ace, now you lead the king. Let's say this is what you've got. Your partner can give you a positive attitude signal. We'll learn about that sometime in the weeks ahead. This is, hey, I really like your suit. Okay, you go, wow, you like my suit. I led the king. I'll lead the three to your ace. If you can lead the eight back to my, my queen, I'll play the jack, and then I'll take the six three because there aren't any more. Isn't that sweet? Okay, so you're hoping your partner has the ace, but there are no trump. Odds are they don't. You know, if they're in one no trump, it's a distinct possibility. But if they're in three no trump and made the decision they're going there freely of their own free will, odds are they're going to have the ace. But if they have the ace, okay, you're going to create two winners in that suit and maybe two more because of the split of the suit. So remember, this is a race, okay, uh, to who can establish their long suit first. So if they even declare has got the, the ace, you drive it out. Okay, now you've got good tricks. You may have a bunch of good tricks. Then the question only is, can you get to them to take them? because the declare is going to try to take his or her tricks first. Okay, and you're going to try to get yours first. So that's the race. Which are you going to be, the tortoise or the hare? Okay, and generally the, tortoise, uh, the hare wins this race. You know, if you're too slow in developing your suit, you're not going to get them. Okay, now let's look at the situation where you lead from the queen jack 10. Okay, we've got this example here. Okay, you've got the queen, jack, 10, 8, which is really a sweet card. That 8 is a sweet card because it creates a natural surround of the 9 that might be in Declare's hand. Okay, almost all of defense is based upon the concept of a natural surround or just a plain surround. Okay, and what that means is, well, let's look at this hand. You lead the queen. The dummy has the king. Your partner has the ace. Okay, that poor king is surrounded by Indians. Okay, and that king is not going to survive. Okay, lead the queen, they play low, your partner goes, aha, I see the king, I've got the ace, I know that that's the top of the sequence. Okay, and plays the four. Now you play the ten. <clears throat> the bottom of the sequence. So your partner now knows you've also got the jack. Sweet. And almost always in this situation, the right card, the, the, the good player is going to play the king because they know that's the only hope that they've got of taking a trick. So they play the king and your partner takes that king with ace, returns the heart, the nines over here, doesn't matter if they've got four or not, which they actually, they only have three given this. You have win the trick with the eight if they play low. Then you take the jack ten, get four tricks. Isn't that nice? Okay. Now, if partner has a higher touching honor, you know, in this particular case, they, you know, that you're, you're leading the queen. Okay, and, and they're looking over and say, aha, that's the top of the sequence because I've got the king. They know exactly where the ace is. All right, you can give your partner a positive encouragement signal. So they continue that suit. They can, if they don't take the ace, they leave the eight. You play the king. You're going to force out that ace, and you're going to help your partner develop that suit. Okay, the, 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 the challenge here is looking at the cart cards and understanding what your partner has, looking at the dummy, formulating your plan on how you're going to manage and, 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 and do that suit, and where what the declarer has. And it's pretty easy to do. If you really think about it, pay attention, look at the dummy, look at your hand. All right, 
the near perfect sequence is pretty much just like the perfect sequence. It's just near perfect. Okay, so let's look at that. You know, in a perfect sequence, if we led the queen, we'd have the ace, we'd have the queen, jack, ten. In the near perfect, we have the queen, jack, space, nine. Okay, so we're missing a card. We're missing the third card in the sequence, but we've got its buddy that lives next door, the nine. Okay, now, what's really look about this is that that's, an, uh, again, a surround because you've got the jack nine. If it's behind the 10, you've got that, that 10 surrounded. Okay, so, you know, common theme all the way through defense is the surround. All right. Now, we didn't include the king, queen, blank. 10 because that's the unblocked, the, the, the a near ultimate sequence that we discussed earlier. Okay, so let's hope that, you know, let's look at more of these two sequences. And these are the only two sequences that come in the near perfect sequences, by the way. All right, we've got the queen jack missing the 10. We've got the jack 10 missing the 9. But we've got the 8, you know, and it's what's really important is we've got that third card. Because when you put these together, they're almost as strong as having that perfect sequence. And because we've got the surround, we're going to treat it just like a perfect sequence. In this case, you know, we're, we're hope our partner has one of the missing cards. One of the missing cards is, in this case, with the queen jack, is the ace king or the ten. Okay. Now, in this particular case, Partner leads the queen, okay, and we have the 10 3. We go, ha. Besides, we know that it's not a perfect sequence, and we also know because it's one of those near ultimate ones is that our partner's also asking, Where in the hell is the 10? Okay, he looks at the dummy, wants his space, said it's not there. He says, I wonder if my partner has the 10. Okay, because that 10 becomes critical to determine whether it can continue that suit or not. Okay, it comes up for you, it comes around to you, and you're going to play that 10, aren't you? That way, you say, hey, partner, I got 10, here it is, now you know where it is. You don't have to worry about it anymore. Okay, now it's safe to continue that suit this long into your heart's content. All right, all right, now. Again, what we're trying to do based upon the card being led is to create a natural surround, okay? Or establish the suit so we can take tricks later. All right, in this case, we got the queen, jack, missing the 10, the nine, and we lead the queen, okay? And the dummy plays the two and your partner, I shouldn't have the ace underlined there, says, aha, I know my my partner has got the, the, the jacks and, and, and the nine. See, this is ten. Okay. I have to make a, a note here. This is a slight correction that I'll make for the future on this slide. Okay. And the declarer can either take the king or not take the king. Okay, doesn't matter. Okay, now the on um, your partner is going should be playing the three instead of the ace to, and saying I've got positive value in this. So you go well, okay. My partner's got the ace or the king. So next you're going to lead the five and 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 your partner's going to play the ace. Once they play the ace, we're going to play the eight. They're going to drive out the king, establishing that suit so that you can run those tricks if you ever get in the lead. All right, let's look at a broken sequence. Okay, we had a perfect and we had a near perfect. Okay, now the broken is kind of the kissing cousin of the other two. Okay, and instead of missing the third card in the sequence, we're missing the second card in the sequence. So, uh, and here's, here's one with the missing king. It's the ace, queen, jack. Okay, now, remember we talked about you could have the queen, you could have the king, jack, ten. Okay, we're not, this is the only broken sequence, the ace, 
missing the king, queen, jack. And we're going to see in a minute why that is true. All right. So what's so special about this? All right. If our partner has the, the, the you lead the, 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 the ace, queen, jack, and you lead the queen, okay, uh, your partner knows it could be from the top of the sequence, or you could have this broken sequence. So you could have the queen jack 10 as the top of the perfect sequence. Now, I just put this example up here with the king three because I want to reemphasize, and we'll get into this more in terms of what card you're supposed to play in terms of the partner of the open lead. You're going to dump that king because whenever you've got two cards and a high honor and another card, Okay, with the potential of blocking the suit, you're going to unblock by playing the king. Now, isn't that nice the way that would fit in if your partner has the broken sequence? All right, now, the, one of the things about the, the, the broken sequence, and this did happen to me in a tournament about five, maybe it could have been 10 years ago, I don't remember, but I remember distinct, distinctly remember sitting there playing this hand. And it, the, the, it, I didn't get a good result on this hand, by the way. You know, I really didn't understand what I was doing. Okay, so, but at any rate, okay, we're in three, no trump. And that goober of an opponent over here, that's you, leads the queen of hearts. Okay, I don't identify the suit here, but I distinctly remember it was hearts. Okay, leads the queen. And I've got the king, seven, two, and I don't really know what they had over here, but they had a couple of them. And the, the and I was the declare, and I have, a, I have, I think, two hearts. Okay, they leave the queen. I go, oh, should I play the king? I'm pretty sure that the partner, the opening leader's got the ace. So I didn't play the king. So I played the queen, and they came around. I played the two, they played the four. Then they played the jack next okay they could have actually been helpful to me and played the 10 but you know i didn't know whether he had four or five or six cards in the suit and i said oh now should i play the king and i said oh i don't know i'm going to play for the drop i said hey i'm going to play for the the, 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 the partner of the opening leader to have the ace and they have just sitting behind there waiting to eat my king. Now, if I'd really thought about it, I would have said, well, if the partner of an opening lead had the ace and another one, if they led the queen, they would have unblocked. Okay, they would have played the ace. Okay, and they didn't play the ace. All right, so, uh, you know, I didn't have a, a, a real clear understanding of what the defensive uh, conventions are. So what I'm trying to point out with this example is that because the ace wasn't played, and I can count the hand, I could I could know they've got probably at least four or five of them. Let's assume they have five of them, that'd be five, three, that's eight. You know, they played one, it's nine. I can count the ones in my hand. I had two, that's 10, 11. Okay, and while it's possible that the uh, uh, that I think more my he might have had three, in which case he could only have two. Okay, so you gotta use the defensive conventions as part of your declare strategy. But to make a long story short, I didn't play the king. Then he he's got a count of the hand, he leads the ace, he drops my king, he takes two more tricks, I'm down one, and if I just play the stupid king when I'm supposed to at trick two. Okay, and that's a subject for another day as it relates to declare play. Okay, I easily make four or five no trump. Okay, was not a good day. All right, so let's take a look here that of the situation. You know, you're either going to create a natural surround uh, or the uh, the uh, or you're going to establish. Uh, uh, the, the trick. Now let's take, for example, let's just hypothetically say that, that the, 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 the declare has the king and they don't take that first trick and, and our partner signal discouragement saying, I don't have the king. Okay, you don't have to continue that suit. 
okay? You can, you can shift to another suit and hopefully your partner will be able to lead it back to you. Okay, so there's multiple avenues can be taken, but you can, if you've got that outside entry, you can also then go ahead and take the ace and then lead the suit again, drive out that king, and with an outside entry, you can set up the suit yourself. So depending on it now, you're getting into the situation of whether you have an outside entry or not, how you're going to play that particular suit. Okay, let's look at the code at tens and uh, code at nines and tens. Okay, and this is a broken, again, a broken suit, but it's a code at 9, 10 broken suit. Okay, one of the key characteristics of this, if you leave the jack, okay, you're denying having uh, anything higher. Okay, and the jack generally is from perfect sequence that says you've got the jack 10, 9. You don't want to leave the jack from a, uh, from a, uh, a two card sequence of the jack 10. Just don't do it. Now you need to have a perfect sequence to lead the jack. All right. Now, so we've talked about leading the ace, the king, and the queen, and the jack up to now. Now, what does it mean if you lead the ten? Well, we're going to give the ten a special meaning. Okay, we're going to call that a coded ten. And what the coded ten promises is, is that you've got the jack and one higher honor. Okay, let's look at that. Okay, so we led the 10. So if you leave the 10, you've got the jack plus the ace, or you've got the king. You don't have, because if you had the, 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 the queen in here, you would have led the queen as we discussed it on the, 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 the previous slide. Okay, if you had, so you can see how these fit in with the other leads, that, power leads that we've sequenced, power leads that we've discussed today. Okay, it's kind of like a jigsaw puzzle with 10 or 15 pieces. Getting to see how they all fit within your brain is a little bit hard. But if you go back and you review the slides in this, this lesson, you'll start to see it. Okay, and over time, you'll go, well, yeah, I know exactly what that means. And you know, it kind of becomes uh, uh, part of your psyche. And it just makes things really interesting and really easy. Okay, now let's take a look at the lead to nine. Okay, nine is going to promise the ten and one, at least one honor, the ace, king, queen, or it could even show the ace, queen. Okay, this doesn't happen very often, the ace, queen. Okay, but if you've got the nine, you could have, the, you're going to guarantee the 10, you could have the ace and you can see what these sequences are. By the way, coded nines and tens are also used against suit contracts. However, the coded nines or tens are not used in suit contracts with the ace. Okay, and we'll revisit that when we get the leads against suit contracts, but the reason for that is in suit contracts, because there's trump, you don't want to underlead your ace because the odds are that the declarer is going to be able to dump his losers in that suit or trump the second one. Okay, and you don't want to get your ace trumped. So this is against the no trump contract. The ace is included within the code at 9 and 10 sequence. Let's take a look at this a little bit. In terms of a couple of examples. Okay, you've got the ace, you're missing the queen, king, queen, and the jack, you've got the jack, ten, and the eight. Okay, so you lead the ten, and your partner instantaneously knows because you led the ten that you're leading it as a coded ten. Okay, and saying, I've got a, the jack and a higher honor, and your partner goes, Ha, I've got the queen. That means the declarer has the king, or the dummy has the king. And you know, it really doesn't matter which one has it because uh, the, 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 the king's going to be in the wrong place. But let's assume because uh, that, you know, you know, because if it's in the if it's in the dummy's hand up here, you know that it's going to take a trick if they have it guarded. Okay, if they, they lead it and he only has two, he's going to go up with the king. 
okay? And because you know that it, it, the code is nine and 10, what you're going to do if you go, if it goes 10, king, what are you gonna play? You're gonna play the queen because you're going to unblock. I think we've used the word surround 100 times and unblock 100 times today. Okay, there's that word again, surround. It creates a natural surround. Let's say that the miss, one of the missing honors is in the dummy and you've got the other missing honors. And here's the king and his, the dummy has the queen. And you go, aha, now you know exactly how you're gonna play this suit. So you see how critical that opening lead is and what card it is. So you're communicating to your partner uh, what you've got so you can make the decision of what to play. In this case, you know, the, the cleric can call for the queen or not. They don't call for the queen. You play the you play low. Then you play the jack next going up in this sequence. Okay. Because the, the opening leader can see that queen too. Okay, you play the jack. Okay, you can play the, the, the queen or not. He doesn't play the queen. Okay, you're going to play the king. You go, why would you play the king? Well, you want to unblock. You know that your king's going to win. You know your partner's got the ace and you've been counting him. So you know that there's only one left in dummy because you can see it. And you play, take, when you're king and you lead back that low one, your partner plays the ace and gobbles up the queen. So you see, that's really cool. Okay, <laughs> there's that word again, natural surround. Okay, we've got the situation where the missing honor is in the declares him. Let's see. How can you how can you create a natural surround? You say, well, your partner led the ten. The, and and you look, say, I've got the king. I know by that my partner has the ace. And you go, how do you know it's the ace? Well, because if he had the queen, he wouldn't have led the ten. He would have led the queen because it would have been the top of a perfect sequence. Wow. Did you get that? If he had the queen, he would have let it. Because if he didn't have the queen, he's promising a coded 10, which promises having the jack and a higher honor. Okay? And because it's a coded 10 and you've got the king, you can tell which honor it is. You know it's the queen. Okay? You go, wow, that's, that's really pretty far out. Okay, if you start to think about it and say, well, how do these cards relate to one another? You can see it. Okay, so what do you do? Being the genius bridge player that you are, is you plunk down the king and say, what? You're going to overtake your partner's 10 with your king? You betcha, because you know where the queen is. Okay, you take the king. And you lead another one back through the declare. And the declare goes, oh, crap. I've only got three of them. I can play the queen or I can play low. It doesn't matter what he does. He's dead meat on a hook. Because let's say he plays low. Your partner plays the jack, wins the trick, leads the ace, kills that, gobbles up that queen, and then takes a bunch more tricks. Isn't that neat? <laughs> As long as you can communicate and properly understand what that's being communicated to you, this stuff becomes really pretty straightforward. But it takes a while to get those gray cells up there in that void between your ears to actually recognize it. So don't give up. Keep practicing. All right. That concludes the, the lesson for today in relationship to the 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 the, the directed and the, the power leads based upon sequences. Okay, what we're going to do now is we're going to go uh, to Shark Bridge. Okay, so let's go ahead and go to the Shark Bridge screen. Okay, and we're going to log in as Al the Dummy. Okay, and what we're going to do, oh, that kind of can't spell. You know I can't type. I can't spell very well either. 
yeah, that's why we have computer. We have spell checkers and grammar checkers. I use them all the time, but I still have a bunch of stuff wrong because I just jot it off too quickly. So I'm going to go in. Okay, there we are. I'm in. There's Shark Bridge. I have to take a sip of coffee. Okay, we're going to go through seven hands. Okay, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to do these from the instructor screen. And uh, hopefully you'll be able to continue to see me while I over here on my second computer. So I'm kind of multitasking. So let's look at this first hand here. Okay, it was one no trump, east, pass, two clubs, initiating statement saying, hey, I've got four card major. Yeah, I'm just kind of drilling this stuff in. Okay, and your partner, North, goes double. Okay, that's a lead directing double. Two clubs is an artificial bid. Okay, so every time an artificial bid occurs, your partner can either, or you, if it happens in front of you, can either pass or double or bid. Okay, if you pass, it says, ah, I don't, I, you know, I may have something in that suit, but I'm not commanding you to, to lead it. Okay, and kind of lower its priority in terms of selecting it for an op opening read. Okay, so, and if you do double, it says, hey, partner, lead this suit when if, you, if you're making the opening read and you get the opportunity to lead it. All right, so that's what that double is. It says, hey, I want you to lead clubs and go two hearts. I've got four hearts, pass, three, no trump. Okay, so now we know that West has 10 plus I card points has got four spades and doesn't have four hearts. So what are we going to lead here? Okay. Well, it's pretty obvious what we're going to lead. You know, I mean, we could have good stuff in some of these other suits. I didn't put much in these. Okay. But our partner said, lead a club. So we lead the 10 of clubs. Okay. So our partner said, lead, directed us to lead. We've got two cards in this suit. What's the rule? We're going to lead the highest card in the suit that our partner has directed us to lead. All right, and comes around and he says, okay, my partner's got 10, probably has another one. I'm gonna play low. I'm gonna give my partner encouragement by playing the two. And we're gonna see later on, that's a, one of the signaling conventions, and that's in play in a couple of weeks. Okay, uh, so our partner, now I met, led that 10, I said, well, yeah, my partner wants me to lead it again if I can get in. Okay, now, the declare says, okay, um, I'm uh, let's say the declare looked at his hands and so I think I've got all the tricks I need and so forth. I'm gonna jump on that. All right, so he takes that king. Okay, now he says, Well, let's see, I've got one, two, three hearts, I've got three diamonds, that's six, I've got seven, I've got uh, three spades. So he's got three spade tricks, three heart tricks, uh, three diamond tricks, and a club. So he's going to take 10 tricks. There's really no way, nothing we can do about that. All right. So we just have kind of a crappy hand. Okay. Now, the, the, the secret here is that we're going to have to, to, to remember what gets played, and hopefully, we're going to get our two tricks at the end, in which case we are. Okay. We're going to, we're going to get either a spade or a club. So let's just kind of run through this, I'm not gonna run through this entire hand, but we've made the proper opening lead. You know, it doesn't, now, one of the things that I, I wanted to point out is we made the perfect lead. Our partner did that lead directing double. Uh, I, I, I led the suit that he wanted, I led the right card. We did everything right, and the declarer still made the contract. Well, that's the way it is, you know, I mean, you do the best that you can. We're going to get all the tricks that we deserve in this hand, but the declare is still going to make the contract. There's not always a killer lead. Okay. Now, in a, in a, in it, you know, if we could, the, the trick is getting all the, 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 the goal is to get all the tricks that we deserve. Okay. And we only deserve two tricks, which we're going to get later in this hand. So we did the best that we could. You know, it's not always going to result in setting the contracts, but it's going to give us our best 
most, and our most optimum result. So we did everything right. So remember, sometimes you're going to get the bear, and sometimes the some days the bear is going to get you. All right, so let's go look at the second hand. Okay, and in this case, uh, our partner says, "Well, do I did I my partner bid? No, there was one no trump and got passed up. No, you go well. Uh, this never happens. No, and when you have the situation when a, one of the opponents bids one no trump and and, and the hand gets passed out, you know that the the person, the partner of the one no trump bidder doesn't have a very strong hand. All right, so this actually occurs quite frequently where they're in one no trump and you've got a really good suit or your partner has a really good suit. The question is, can you find it? It's pretty easy to find it if you're looking at it. It's a little bit harder to find it if it's in your partner's hand. Okay. So here it was really easy for us to find it because we're looking at our hands. We've got a nice hand, but we've got an, a, an ultimate sequence in diamonds. We've got ace, we've got the king, we've got the queen. Ah, so what are we going to lead? We are going to lead that queen of diamonds. Okay. And. Okay, we're leading that, that okay, I'm, I'm, I know what I'm looking at. Okay, I'm leading the Queen of Diamonds. Okay, on my screen, I've got model windows open and I, I got a little bit confused. We're leading the Queen of Diamonds, they play low. Our partner plays the eight, that's the highest thing. Hey, I'm discouraging you. And we say, we don't care if you're discouraging us by playing that. We're now going to want to tell our partner our partner goes, ah, you won the trick. You must have the ace king. Okay, and now we look at our hand and we go, wow, what do we want our partner to lead back to us if he gets into the lead? Well, that's pretty obviously we want a club. Okay, because we look at the dummy. Okay, remember, we look at the dummy and say, aha, uh -huh, it doesn't have the ace. So if I can get my partner to lead a club, I can win that king. Okay, and if my partner has the ace, then we can win two clubs. Okay, so we're going to lead the king of diamonds, telling our partner that we would like a lower ranking suit returned to us if he gets the opportunity. Now the three gets played, the seven gets played, and the 10 gets played. We go, well, that's eight of them. I can see another one that's nine, and I've got 10, 11, 12. Duh. You go, duh. Either my partner's got one more or the, the, the declare has one more. And so you lead the ace of diamonds. Okay, and now your partner is going to give you a signal about what suit he wants. Let me play the nine. We'll get into these signals later on. But the nine says, we're going to play something called odd even. And nine says, I like cards. And you go, okay, let me write that down or jot it down in my, your memory cells. Okay, and you just, yeah, it's really nice. You're sitting there and you're, and you're just chuckling away. Saying, hey, I got, I got a couple more diamond tricks coming, guys. And so you just keep beating on them and beating on them. You taking those diamonds. Okay. And uh, now, okay, we've taken all our diamonds. What are we going to do now? Well, what suit did your partner tell you they wanted lead? With uh, their, what they call the suit preference signal. Well, like I said, I, you know, I, I told you, they said, I want a heart. So you go, well, my partner has wants a heart. They must have something in a heart. So what are you going to lead? You're going to lead the queen. You go, why lead the queen? Well, you're trying to help your partner. Okay, your partner said they've got something in it. You don't want to be in the lead. You want your partner to be able to lead back to you in clubs. So you can lead the queen. Okay, so partner plays low and the declarer says, oh crap, I'll just take that ace. All right, now, the, now you're going to take three quick spade tricks, okay? He takes his spade tricks. He says, I need to be able to, 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 to get my clubs to work. I need clubs. I, I need to be able to finesse those clubs. 
So he comes over and says, here comes, I'm going to finesse a club. Okay, uh, just get like that. All right. So he leaves the club, comes around, says, I've got to take the finesse in order to make the contract. He plays the queen. You take the king. Okay, and you've got that well-preserved seven of hearts. So you leave the seven of hearts back to your partner and your partner takes the king. Okay, so you see, we've taken seven tricks. We've set the contract. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and play this out just so you can see the minus 50 come up here and see that we set the contract. Okay, so by, by doing everything that we were supposed to, in the sequence that we were supposed to, we'd be able to take five diamond tricks. We'd be able to find out then that our partner wanted hearts, and we told our partner on trick two that we wanted clubs, so we took seven tricks without being able to communicate all that information, you know, succinctly and clearly. We would have never set that contract. Okay, so you can see how interesting that is. Okay, let's go to the next one. Okay, we're up to hand three. What do we got here? Well, no, uh, you know, again, they, they start out with a diamond bit of heart saying they've got four plus hearts. And then the declarer says they've got four plus spades. It goes one, no trump, two, no trump, three, no trump. They just kind of uh, crawled their way up to three, no trump. Okay. So what are we going to do? Okay. Uh, and we look at our hand, partner didn't give us any help. They didn't double anything, telling us to lead something. They didn't bid anything. What good is our partner? Okay, so we look at our hand and we go, well, we've got the ace, we've got the king, and we've got the jack. And we go, ooh, that's a near ultimate sequence. Okay, and if my partner's got the queen, if my partner's got the queen, and I can get them to drop it or to take that trick. Okay, we can run this suit. All right, so let's come over here and let's take a let's 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 look at the have both of these hands present. So we're going to lead the king. Okay, we're leading the king from this near ultimate sequence. And our partner goes, huh, my partner just led the king. And they're 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 looking at their hand. So I got the queen. Okay. There's no reason to lead the king unless it's not the top of the sequence because I got the queen. Okay. So oh, if it's not at the top of the sequence, what is it? Ah, it's a near ultimate sequence. My partner has ace, king, jack. Okay. Just by the sheer fact that the king was led in this particular situation, and he can see the queen in his hands, he knows that the oh, the, the person that made the opening lead's got the ace, king, jack. So it progresses around to the partner, the opening leader. And what does he do? He says, hey, you want to know where the queen is? Here it is. I'm playing it on your king and, and your pet. <laughs> And, and the open leader goes, hot diggity, okay? Because now I know it's safe to continue leading clubs. So he leads the ace of clubs now. And, okay, and he sees, well, that's eight. I've got nine, 10, 11. My partner, come back here, played the, the six. Okay, now. All right, and you go, well, is that important? Yeah, it's important they played the six because the, the, the astute Al the dummy recognizes that the two of clubs hasn't been played. Okay, oh, my head hurts. Well, you got to pay attention. So you've got to be att paying attention to what gets played, and what doesn't get played. Because of the two of clubs is missing, the declarer would have played the two if he had it. Okay, so paying attention to what spot cards get played is really important. So now I can conclude, well, my partner's got a third club. I'm going to leave that jack. Uh, and let's see, what do you want to throw away? He's going to throw away a diamond. My partner plays the two of clubs. I knew he had the two of clubs. And the declarer plays the 10. I go hot diggity. And I play 
two more rounds of clubs. Okay, I, I, and our partner signals for a diamond. You see that? He's five of diamonds. He says, give me a diamond, give me a diamond. Okay, and I take that fifth club. All right, now, he's, the, the player's in real trouble. He's not going to make the contract. Okay. And because the dummy, the, my partner can see the dummy open here, he can see he, all he needs to keep is two diamonds to keep parity with the dummy because he's got the king behind the queen. Okay, and this gets thrown away. And we're going to leave because our partner has asked for the, the diamond, we're going to lead it. Okay, and in this case, the declare goes, well, I've got one, two, three. I, you know, he's, a, he's going to lose another trick now because he wasn't paying attention to what he was playing. Okay, so instead of making the contract because we led the wrong suit and the wrong card, he's going to be down two. Let's go ahead and take the next deal because that's where the advantage of that near perfect sequence, ultimate sequence comes in with the request to unblock. Our partner recognized it, threw away the queen, and then we could determine we could continue the suit. Now, if we led fourth, at when to work, it might have worked out, but might not have worked out. So it was a way of clearly communicating. So let's look at the next deal. All right, on this deal, all right, we've got okay, basically the same bidding sequence. They they, they bid stamen, didn't find a bid, ended up in three no trump, but they got their confidence. So the question is, they probably got between 25 and 30 points, and the odds are pretty strong that they're going to make it. Now, the issue here is if they're going to make the contract, we've got to make sure that we're going to get all the tricks we deserve. All right, so it's obvious that our best suit in this case in terms of creating tricks is clubs. We've got a perfect sequence. We've got the king, we've got the queen, and we've got the jack. So... What we're going to do is we're going to lead the king, telling our partner that we have one of the different things. And our partner looks at the dummy and goes, huh, no ace there, no queen there. Okay, uh, and looks at their hands. I don't have the ace, I don't have the queen. This is probably the top of the perfect sequences. So he said, my partner's got the king, queen, jack, maybe more. Okay, now, the declare calls for the three. We play the five. This is something called the Foster Echo, and it helps to, our partner who led the clubs uh, get more information about suit. We'll discuss that in a couple of weeks, too. Okay, and the, the declare is a smart guy. Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up, I'm going to come back here, and I'm going to let you see all the hands. Okay, the declare is a smart guy here. He's got the uh, he goes and he counts his, and counts his tricks. He says, well, I don't have any, in any sure tricks in spades yet, but I've got three sure tricks in hearts. I've got a sure trick in clubs, that's four. And I've got four tricks in, in diamonds, that's eight. Okay, so he needs to develop one trick. Now, one of the dangers here from a declare standpoint is that I might have a whole bunch of clubs and be able to run that club, run, run those clubs if I have the ace of spades. So he says, well, I'm going to hold up. He's going to use what's called the hold up play. Okay, so he holds up, he plays the seven, and I say, okay, I took that trick. Now I'm going to tell my partner by the second card that I lead, what's the bottom of my sequence? I play the jack. Okay, and our partner says, okay, I'm going to play the nine. Okay, telling you that I've got two, two of them because the four is missing. Okay, and the, then the declare to minimize the amount of communication in my hand, plays the eight. All right, now I kept count, that's eight, nine, 10, 11. I know that the declare's got the ace now, and I know my partner's got one. So I could safely lead a club at this particular point in time, knowing the declare's going to win it. Okay. Uh, or I could switch to another suit if I think there's an advantage to it. Now, because when you break a new suit, you give a, uh, you actually give up a half a trick, I go, well, I don't want to finesse my partner. So we go ahead and lead the two of clubs. All right. 
and the gift pen gets placed. Now, my partner would like a spade back, right? But there's no way to signal it. You can only just play the, the, the four of clubs. Now, the ace is taken. All right. Now, the declarer says, well, I need to develop a trick, and I need to develop it in spades. What I'm going to do is lead a spade, play the jack. If the ace isn't taken, okay, I've got my ninth trick. Okay, so I play the ace, taking that jack, hoping that I can set up the spade. But lo and behold, now the direct, the declarer has the rest of the tricks. Okay, so they're going to make five. Okay, we, uh, we made the right opening lead choice in terms of the type of lead, the suit, and the card. Okay, and we got all the tricks that we deserve. So we got an optimum result here. Did we set the contract? No, but we gave ourselves the maximum number of chances of doing so. So, you know, just because you do the right thing doesn't mean you're going to set the contract. It all depends on where the card all right, let's go to the next deal. We're getting that. We're up to number five, and there's seven of them here. Now, in this particular case, we have the same sequence there with a use statement and so forth. And we examine our hands and go, well, you know, we definitely don't want to lead spades because that would be leading into the declare. He said he had spades. Okay. Now, you know, and we, while we could lead hearts because we'd be leading through the, 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 the West Hand who said they had spades. We look at this and say, well, we've got a reasonably good set of clubs. Now, if our partner has the ace and the king or something else, we might actually be able to develop that. So let's look at our clubs. We've got the queen, we've got the jack, and we've got the nine. Okay, this is one of those near ultimate sequences where we're actually going to ask our partner to tell us where the ten is. So we leave the queen. Okay, the, the six gets played. Our partner goes, well, uh, I don't see the, 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 the king or the ace anywhere. I don't know where this is, but I have the ten. Okay, let's, 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 let's look at, let, let's uh, let you see that north hand. Okay, whoops. Okay, I'm going to do this. There we go. So our partner says, hey, he led the queen. Okay, why did he lead the queen? Does he have the queen jack 10? He looks at his own hand using his eyeballs. He says, hey, I've got the 10. Well, can't be a perfect sequence. Why would my partner lead the queen? Okay, does he have the ace, king, queen? Ah, that's a possibility. Okay, so what he's going to do in this particular case, because he can't tell, is he's going to play the five as part of the foster echo connection. Okay, and the declare jumps up and takes it with the king. And you go, oh, the declare's got the ace king. We know he doesn't have the ultimate sequence of the ace king queen, but because he led the queen, now we know he's got the near ultimate sequence of the queen, jack, nine. Okay, by paying attention to the cards that have been led, we can now deduce what the declarer has and what our partner has. We now know the declarer has the ace. Okay, both of us actually know that. Okay, so now the declarer says, okay, I've got to see what uh, what cards I need to develop and take nine tricks, okay? And we're going to see. We've got two spade tricks. We've got one heart trick, okay? We've got another club trick, and we've got oh, we've got we've got eight diamonds. We're going to try to set up the diamonds, okay? So because the finesse is over here in the dummy, they're going to take the ace of diamonds first, okay? And our we all follow suit. Now he says, okay, let's try that finesse. And he says, I've got all the others. I can actually play the eight first. Okay. And it doesn't work. All right. Now, now because uh, we led the, the clubs first, 
our partner is now saying, our partner wants to know where the 10 is. So we're going to leave the 10. Hey, partner, I've got the 10. Okay, and the Clara says, okay, I need to, I need to cut down the communication. I, I, I don't want the, 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 the North to be able to lead clubs again, so he ducks. Okay, now we have a count of 8, 9, 10, 11. Okay, and uh, our, our partner who's in the lead leads the club again. Here comes the 8. All right, now let's see, what's he going to throw away? He needs the heart has got to the base, so he's going to throw away a heart. Okay, now the declares says, okay, I've got three tricks so far. I've got two spade tricks coming at five, and I've got a heart trick coming at six, and I can take three diamond tricks as long as I can get over there. That would be seven, eight, and nine. Okay, but he says, okay, let me see what I'm going to do. And he goes, uh, hmm. If he's really smart, what he's going to do, he's going to take his tricks and run because he's got three, he's got four, five, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, so what he's going to probably do is take the diamond. Okay. He might be tempted to take a heart finesse. Okay, if he's tempted to take a heart finesse, he may be in real trouble. Okay, but he's fairly safe because he can take that heart finesse because he knows that North doesn't have any more clubs. Okay, the worst thing that the Clare could do is take his ace, king, and spades. So let's go ahead and show you the rest of the hand so you can see what some of those deliberations are. Okay. So he's sitting over here in his hand. I think this is the right hand. Okay. And let's say he tests the waters and plays the ace of spades just for the heck of it. Okay. So he's. And now, because of the cards that he has in his hand, the declarer can actually take a free finesse. Okay, and here's what a free finesse is. He leaves the jack because the cleric knows that North has no more clubs. He's going to play low, and he's going to give up that king of hearts. And by giving up that king of hearts, he establishes an overtrick. And the reason he's got a free finesse is he has control of the spades with the king. He has control of the hearts with the ace queen now, and he's got three good diamonds. So really a good declare there. He recognizes to take a free finesse and he can make an extra trick. If he doesn't do that, Al the dummy might get in lead later on and take the, with the queen of spades and take the jack knight of clubs, in which case he would only make three. So this way he gets one extra trick. So remember, this is a continual battle back and forth as to who's going to do what. Okay, and it's it's based upon the, the opportunity that's presented. Okay, let's go to the next. Year. We're going to go to hand number six. Okay, in this hand, okay, um, same type of bidding. Okay, now last week we talked about the situation where we had two four card suits that were about equal value. Okay, and then if that's the case, we leave the suit without the ace. Okay, I want to point this out that these are not about equal value. The hearts are much stronger than the spades. So what we're going to do, we've got this broken, this near perfect, uh, this near perfect sequence. We've got the ace, queen, jack, we're miss, or the what's called the broken sequence, and we're missing the king. So what we're going to do here is going to lead the queen. Okay, now you can see that the declare is faced with the immediate quandary. Do you play the king or not? Okay, now, in standard declare play, when faced with this situation, what you're going to do is you're going to play one round. Uh, and I, I, I misplayed here. My partner's going to play the six. We're going to play one round of hearts, and we're going to duck. Now, 
the opening leader leads the jack. Now this is standard declarative play because they know uh, that they that, that leaving that if they play low, the probability of uh, the ace dropping is very low. Okay, uh, and that uh, if the North had the ace and a little one they would have unblocked. He's just going to go ahead and say, I'm going to take the chance that they have the king. They, 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 he goes ahead and plays the king. He wins the trick. Okay, so he played it correct. If he didn't play that king, if he let us win that trick, we would have then plucked down the ace, dropped his king, and taken another hard trick. Okay, so the declarer did a good job here. So let's look at all of the hands. So we can see where things are at. All right, now, as it turns out, we have the ace of hearts and another heart trick. Our partner has a heart that leads back to us. Now the question is, can we get in the lead? Okay, so now the, the declarer goes, well, I've got... Uh, the clubs are 4 3. I might be able to set up a club trick, but we got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. We're counting our tricks. 6. We've got 6 sure tricks. We've taken 1, that's 7. We need to develop 2 tricks. Where can we develop 2 tricks? Well, we've got 4 diamonds and 3 diamonds. We might be able to finesse there. Hmm. Okay, might be able to do a finesse there and set up a diamond trick. We've got four clubs and three clubs. We might be get a 3-3 three, three split and set up a, a, a trick there. So we're going to pick the suit, what we've got strongest, and we're going to see if we can deduce some information. So the declare leads the ace of... Okay, we're the declares over here, lead the club. Uh, to see if they can gather some information. Now, we're going to be using count signals later on. All right, so now the really good declarer is going to pay attention, find out what count signals we used, and pay attention. Now, in this particular case, we're going to signal, North is going to signal with the, the, the three. Okay, we don't need, it's not important to know what, what the, the count signals are right now. But in this case, it says he's got two or four. Okay, and the declarer is going to go, okay, I'm going to take the queen. Okay, and uh, the, uh, the soft hand is going to lie. Okay, we'll talk about lying much later. Okay, so he takes that, he plays the king. He says, okay, I got that. And he's paying attention, says, uh huh, oh dear. North has got two more clubs. So you can see that the Claire is going to use the defensive signals against you. Okay? But that's not important. You know, I mean, if you're giving your partner information, you're also giving it to the declare. Okay. It's the question is who can make the most value of it? It's the same with bidding. When you bid, you're telling the opponent something about your hand. Okay, so. This is just trying to point that out. Okay, he says, okay, the clubs aren't going to work. He says, all right, let me go ahead. I'm going to finesse the diamond. Okay, and I'm going to play low. He jumps up there with that queen, and our partner takes the king. And he says, okay, and the declarer goes, oh, darn. And our partner, being really smart, leads the ten back. We having kept count of the number of hearts, say, okay, we can see that last heart over there. We play our ace, take the trick. We take the 13th heart, okay, uh, throwing away the spade. Okay, and our partner says, okay, uh, I want a diamond back. And he gives me a signal, okay, and we'll that take a, it'll be a couple of weeks before I tell you what that signal means. But what he's saying is, hey, I, I, want a, I want a diamond. That's where I've got something, okay? And the declare says, okay, uh, let's see, who let, okay, he says, I got, get, I got losers here in diamonds, throws one away. And because we've won, and our partner said that they want a diamond back, we go ahead and we leave the jack. 
chain. It goes up with the ace, plays the four. Now we know our partner, if they ever get in the lead, has got a good diamond trick. Okay? And you can see that the Claire has kind of created a problem for himself. Okay, because he's got the good ace king of spades, he's got the good ace of clubs, and now he's actually in play himself because he's going to ultimately have to lead a club or a diamond. Let's see, who's lead is it? Okay, who won this? Uh, oh, it's me. Okay, so we we led that We're over here, and uh, he leads the spades. Okay, takes a path of least resistance. Because I'm going to play things and see if I can get the other people to throw something away. Okay, and really, we don't have to make any choices. He places eights. Oh, uh, we throw away the spade because it's the boss point. He throws away that. Now he's down to the point that he has to lead a club or a diamond. So he leaves the diamond, comes back around. Our partner takes that kind of time to take the jack of clubs. Okay. And guess what? We set the contract because we communicate it correctly on the opening lead and then throughout the rest of the hand. All right, we're going to do one last hand. Okay, so let's go to the next field and look at this one. Okay, and they went through the same type of sequence. And this time, uh, you know, we're going to look at our hand. And we go, well, we've got the ace, and we've got the ten, and the nine. Oh, boy, we can do a code at nine. That's definitely the suit we want to lead, and we can do a code at nine. What does a code at nine say? Well, we've got the ten. It guarantees that. And we've got either the ace or the king. In this case, we've got the ace. So we go ahead, and we lead that nine, okay? And we see the dummy. Okay, and said, well, the dummy's got the 10 jack. Okay, now let's come back over to our partner and expose that hand so that you can see it too. Oops, I get this wrong every time. All right, we want north, south, and not east, west. Okay, I'm just clicking things like crazy here. All right, there we go. So our partner, you go, you're up here now. We're, we're switching you. You're, 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 you're a schizophrenic and you've got two personalities. And, okay, so you led the nine and now you're over here at the robot. Okay, and you get to say, oh, my partner led the nine. That's a code at nine. Okay, so my partner's got the 10. Okay, and we're supposed to be able to see the dummy. So this is West. Where's West? Okay, now we can see the dummy. Okay. And the dummy's got the jack, and I've got the queen, so who's got the king? Well, my partner could have the king, or my partner could have the ace. So the declarer goes, mm, I'm going to play low. So the declarer plays the six. And I'm going to try to keep that jack. Maybe it can win a trick if they don't know what they're doing. And our partner goes, well, my partner either has the ace or the king. Okay, he guaranteed me the 10. I can see the jack. So there's no reason for me to play the queen. What I'm going to do is I'm going to play the five as part of my foster echo, saying I got one higher. Okay, and now the declarer jumps in and takes the king. Okay, so what do we know? And what we know up here as the partner is if we get in the lead, we're going to play the queen because we can see the jack X, and we know our partner's got the ace. Then we're going to play the four to the ace, and that jack's going to fall, and our partner's going to take the rest of the club tricks. Okay. We know all of that now after the play of trick one. Okay. Isn't that wonderful? Being able to have all of that information. Now the whole challenge is, can we get in the lead? That is the whole issue. Now, as it turns out, uh, we're going to be able to get in the lead sometime. Okay? So, 
Uh, we, we, we can get in the lead with the Queen of Hearts, but let's go ahead and, and expose all the hands so that we can discuss what the, see what the, the, the declare is thinking. Okay, so they won the King of Clubs in their hand. Okay, now they're going to probably try to develop to do the diamonds because they've got four of them. They're going to try to squeeze us. Okay, so they're going to lead the, the four diamonds and come around. I'm going to have to play the 10, indicating I've got two of them. They play the jack. And our partner plays the, the eight, indicating they have four. So now we know they're probably going to take four diamond tricks. So they jump in here and they do this. Then they lead, go to the ace king. Now, we want a club. Okay, so. Uh, one of the, 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 the challenges here is being able to figure out telling our partner that we want a club. All right. Now, we, it's kind of hard. We don't know whether we're, we, we, we have to figure out what to protect. Okay. And we look over here at the dummy. And the, the dummy has the ace, king of hearts. So that's where the biggest threat is. So we're going to throw away the ten of spades. Okay, and the tennis space actually points to clubs. Okay, and we'll have to wait till we get to that, but that's something kind of called odd, even, circular. Okay, and they play another one, and we decide, well, we're going to play another, another one of these away. And they throw, the, the dummy, the declare throws away a heart in the dummy. Okay, what the declare throws away is helpful. Okay, because they're saying they don't need that card. Okay, so it kind of points out that hearts isn't the suit that they're going to want to try to establish, it's spades. And you go, well, I hope that we can, we can, we can, we can keep them from uh, setting up those spades. Okay, so the, now, now they've got to make a decision. What are they going to do? Are they going to try to develop the spades or are they going to try to develop uh, the, the hearts? Now. If they make the wrong decision and say, okay, I'm going, I'm going to see if, uh, now given what's been discarded, we're just going to assume they make the wrong decision and they can go say, I'm going to see if I can, I can, I can get the hearts to break. And they leave the hearts and then they leave the spade and comes back take the ace, they burn the finesse for whatever reason. Now they're in real trouble. Okay, he comes back over here, he leaves the spade. Okay, we, we know we're not going to win a heart. He comes up here. And now they leave the spade. We can, because the ace king has been played, we can afford to throw away the eight of spades. You take the king of hearts and they're just kind of playing down saying, I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. And in this case, they leave the heart. He takes the heart. Takes the good king of, uh, good queen of spades. Leave the Queen of Clubs knowing I have the Ace of Clubs and leave the Four of Clubs. And lo and behold, they're in three no trump. Okay. They make three no trump because they played the hand not perfectly. You know, if they played it perfectly, they would make four. Because they made a mistake, we got an extra trick. But because of our opening lead, because of the way that we signaled and so forth, it gave us the opportunity to let them make a mistake. So we took an extra trick. All right, we're going to close up Shark Bridge. We finished uh, the, the lesson for the day. I'm going to close this up. We're going to come back up here. Okay. Uh, I'm going to close this. And what I'm going to do is go ahead and say thank you. And we'll look forward to seeing you again in another lesson, either live or recorded. So have a great day.